You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you in all the 24 time zone on this beautiful blue and green planet Earth. Welcome to The Real Short Box Audio. And let me introduce to you my two co-hosts and co-conspirators. First, we have a man, a young man from the great state of Ohio. He is uh, Bruce Campbell's number two fan. He is find, Donald. Donald. I'll find that number one fan and I will fucking end him. Will you now? Yes. You really want to be number one that bad, huh? I will be. So you're going to cut a there throat? There can only be a number one, right? So you're really, one number one. So like Highlanders, you're going to cut the throat of a man cut to a be bitch. Bruce Campbell's number one fan. Yep. All right. We have Donald here, uh, apparently a sociopath. I was not aware of that. And a knife. And our other co-host and co-conspirator, a man who is a righteous man, a man who is celebrating. Pious man. A pious man who's celebrating these 40 days of Lent, who's given up many things. He is simply the ravishing Raphael, how are you doing today, Showtime. Sir? Let's go. Showtime. It's showtime. It's showtime. Showtime. It's showtime. Time. Now, tonight or today... Hey, by the way, I didn't give up anything. You, <laughs> I gave up giving up. So what's your priest going to say yeah, when, you, when you that's go with... I gave up giving up. Wow, that's not good enough, man. Did I'm going gonna, gonna to push through on perhaps, everything. Perhaps Did, you should try giving up on FOMO. No, I can't do it. No. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. For Lent, I gave up giving up. Wow, you got your ashes last Wednesday, right? I did, and I told and I, and I told I told the man, so I'm gonna give up on giving up. Mm, mm. I thought this old guy at McDonald's had like fallen down and hit his head, in the ashes. No. but it was like a shit ton of ashes. There was like chunks on yeah. his forehead. Yeah, sometimes I notice the priest they put a little too much they on the head. A little out of hand. A little so. too much. I think what sometimes. he I think what happens is, is he looks at how much you need it. <laughs> what? You walk in, he goes, that guy needs the Lord. And then, and then he just... Well, but, all the well, well, but put a huge cross on their, <laughs> on their forehead? Wow. Yeah. And then like... I know your mother. Ta-da! You know? <laughs> and so there's like a, a, a good, pious, holy woman. He just puts like a tiny one on there. Like, oh, and he goes, oh, she's <laughs> great. She doesn't need it. Let me just, come, let me just splash it on you. Yeah. Donna <laughs> walks oh, in, God. he throws a goddamn bucket. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, he's, he's, he's just... All of a sudden, he's real dark at that point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd be in trouble with that. Right? Uh, whoa, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah, we're very careful, very yeah, careful. Yeah, no yeah, no yeah. black face here, sir. No, 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 no not no, at all. No, no. This is the this is the comic coalition, sir. Yes, yes. that's right. We, we we come from all sizes and colors. The Bennington, the Bennington colors of comics. There we you go. The, we the goddamn pack of Skittles. Mm-hmm. The pack of Skittles, that's right. No, we, no, there, but no, but the, the rainbow can be tasted here. Uh, the ra- different we, colors, I don't know. True, we don't the, the whole rainbow's not on there. M&M's probably is more legit. Right? Right? I think it's so. like a dark yeah. brown. You can M&M's, yeah. You can taste the rainbow. Is there one M&M color they took out of the bag at one point yeah, yeah the light brown I yeah light brown they did that was horrible like, yeah. like a tannish color yeah keep, i remember they that. gotta keep why do they get rid of it? that's the mexican one they got <laughs> right. rid of it. Yeah, that's, that's evil that's they don't that's have evil. any white m&ms so there they you did go. But, it's, but it's the they mint did. mint mint oh ones. that's right i'm mm-hmm. delicious that's messed up well here at the real short box you can always taste the rainbow yep now what's important is we're gonna discuss as uh, Raphael briefly mentioned fomo fomo in comics fomo in the hobby. We're gonna we're gonna talk about like elements that that involve you know people's fear of missing out, but we're also gonna be talking about uh, the hobby itself, collectors, um, what what one person sees as incorrect or evil uh, isn't necessarily that. It's it's all perspective, really. And choice. You have to make the choice. What I want to say here is we are not here. We're not promoting FOMO. We're not against FOMO. Nope. What we're saying we're is neutral. Is Lately, on Instagram and YouTube and all the platforms, we've heard a lot of people who have um, are total against FOMO. People who are, um, you know, bashing people who go out and look for the variants and are chasing the you know, the almighty big book per se mm-hmm. or, or the week. M and M, yeah. And and honestly, to tell you the truth, you know, I've always been taught in any of collecting where it was sports cards, uh, whether it was action figures, mm-hmm. whether it's Funko. Whereas my comics was, your hobby has to be able to pay for itself. It's got to be a living organism. Got to be able to pay on its own, right? So sometimes you have to chase the books that are that are gonna make you money, so that you could put them towards books that you really want in your collection. And is that FOMO? I guess you could say it's FOMO. Your fear of missing that book that's gonna make you the big dime. But it's also 
part of the hobby. It's, it's you know, they, they the first, the NECA turtle gets released at Target and you rush to Target before it opens to get that one figure and it's not there. It's FOMO. You're, you're fear of missing out that figure, but it's also a fact that you need it in your collection. So you're chasing it. And it's sometimes, I've gotten books that I've chased for weeks and months and I finally get the book and then I sell it a week later because it wasn't the fact that I needed to have that book. It was just the thrill of the chase to mm -hmm. finally have it in my hands. You know, but and and I'll let my other guys come here and, and tell you what they feel. But you know, the we we have a lot of collecting years at this table at the moment, and they can all tell you that FOMO's been around since they were kids. Yeah, even before oh, that. Oh yeah, I mean, death of Superman. That's you right. You know, like they're over thirty one years and ago. I, and I was just a kid, you know, pretty young, and I I didn't know what you know what FOMO meant or mm -hmm. anything. I just knew that just everybody wanted, wanted that book. He wanted, it. and I I also wanted it though because I was at the time. I uh, interested in Superman. I wasn't saying that I was like a heavy hitting crazy fan or anything, but I like Superman. I seen the movie and I, you know, there were movies and I enjoyed it and I was like, okay, well, he's dying. This seems like a big thing. Finality. You gotta yeah. have it. Yeah. So I was like, I need to own this. I need, for me, it's a lot of times it's about owning a piece of history. About owning something, you know, like uh, Seduction of the Innocent, the mm -hmm. book. Oh, know, yes. Th there was no FOMO for me. No. Nope. It was just wanting to own that piece of history. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man run, what was it, 97, 90, 96, 97, 98, I think, where they uh, cut out the uh, Comics Code Authority. Oh, they yes. They just didn't oh, use it right. because right. it was about drugs. Uh, those three issues were important for me. I didn't feel like I, you know, was going to... Uh, like it was, oh, you know, everybody wants it, so I need it or something. It was something I wanted as a piece of history. Sometimes that coincides with other people's wants, which for them, it could be a FOMO type aspect. But for me, it, it's a lot of times about owning pieces of history, things that you just don't see every so, you know, every, uh, every day. Uh, you know, variant covers sometimes. I'm like, wow, that is the coolest freaking cover I've ever seen. You gotta have it. And I've said this thousands of times, mind you. This is the coolest cover I've ever seen. And for me, it's like, I want to own that because that, to me, that's a piece of, uh, that's like a time capsule. It's a piece of the time that's a, that's a showing that character or that showing that's artist talent or they're putting him in a scenario where it's relevant to me. You know, like Neil Adams with the the Muhammad Ali boxing oh, and yeah. stuff, you know, boxing Superman and that, you know, that historic book. Right. It's a historic book. It's a seminal piece. And a lot of people wanted it. And of course, you know, probably everybody, be, oh, that's FOMO or whatever. But it's not, you know, so it just depends. I, I think it's a mixed bag. Think about think about uh, the death of uh, Human Torch, right? Yeah, oh, I remember that the poly bag, the poly bag with the three lasted two months, and yeah. also I believe some of them had signed a signature of Stan Lee in some of them, like secretly. If you no shit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, but everyone, my God, I should open mine. I, I have two of them. I never opened them. Yeah, oh, we need I, to open ours. I wasn't. I was. You probably lucky. You probably got. Yeah, one. true. At the time, I wasn't uh, collecting books. At that time, I was in the sports cards. And when that when that book hit, even I heard of it, and mm -hmm. even I went down to Golden Apple and and bought five or six of those books just because I knew it could be something. Yeah. And they ended up in a box and then they're worthless, but they're in the box. And I basically can tell you right now, if you're a collector of comic books, of toys, of anything, be the first person to post on our, on this, on this um, podcast and tell me there's not one book in your collection, one toy in your collection, one card in your collection that isn't FOMO. And I guarantee you there's probably not one person that can do that Unless they've already sold them. But I guarantee you everyone has one FOMO book that they bought that they can't get rid of now because the prices went super low. And mm -hmm. it just happens. Like uh, Batman Fortnite. I remember that was a thing a couple remember? years ago. Yeah. And I actually did dump mine just in time. Ooh, yeah, you got lucky. I ended up just breaking even, mm -hmm. I, I think, when, when I did. Because you know. once once we learned that it was just they're going to repeat the code or something like that, right. I, thought, I thought it was like they're a one-time thing. Yeah. One-time thing. I'm like, oh. Okay. That would have been great. And if you would have access to that one character only through this book, I thought they were doing that. Yeah, me too. But no, they actually were stupid. They should have actually done something like that. Make it harder. Well, I mean, well they put it, they put in the, you can go on the website and get it. Yeah. yeah, that's even more dumb. They put it in the trade. It's even more dumb. It was just it really make it something hard to get. Yeah. But that's the thing. Is that, but that's what be, but then that's where FOMO really kicked in. No, I'm saying if they made it they that hard. Out. I mean bombed out. If they made it that hard, then FOMO would be big. Yeah. My biggest thing is is stop bashing people for having a little FOMO. 
I'm not saying people, you know, resellers and dealers and stores should prey on the on the people with just FOMO, but FOMO. Unfortunately, they do. They do, but I'm saying, but FOMO brings people in. They, they probably don't even buy it. They probably look for the book, don't have it, they buy something else. That was a point that I've, I've seen many collectors talk about. They say, oh, well, it brings in a lot of people. And then um, there'll be arguments for other people where they say, oh, well, it brings in other people, but when they get burnt, mm-hmm. then they don't want to go back again. Mm-hmm. And that's fine, too. That's part of the process. You know, you... You're you're gonna shed some some weight, so to speak, when mm-hmm. when dealing with that and investing and stuff. Any type of investment, it's like investing in stock. Yep, true. You know, hundred percent. I mean, like where where is that? You know, when you're talking about stocks, you have to look. To me, you have to look at comic books like stocks. You have to know when to blue, no, when no, to no, sell the on the high no, the and chips. buy in the low, and and you have to follow the trends. Yep. And that's just the way it is for those that want to make money, and those that want to supply themselves uh, with a continuous source of income so they can continue with the collection because we're not all rich people. We're not all making mint, you know, fortunes. Mm-hmm. Except Raphael here. So we have to buy books when they're when they're cool and we think that they're going to be hot Yep. and just hang on to them until they're hot. And if they're not, then we either sell them off for a loss or, you know, no gain or we just sit on them for a while. And, and see what happens. Well, yeah. you, you've been taking a lap around the block several times lately because you're on Kang. Very yeah. early. Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was huge. I saw when the Russo brothers posted the purple glove, and they said this is coming. I immediately I told you. I think I sent you the picture. I said Kang's coming. Mm-hmm. I said I know it. That's Kang. Mm-hmm. Other people were like, ah, whatever, you know. And then people forgot about that post. But I didn't forget about that post. Mm-hmm. You know, I invested in every Kang book I could find. That was Avengers and uh, and Fantastic Four and mm-hmm. things like that, all the early books. And I think mm-hmm. Sean was the same way. Mm-hmm. But he just liked that character to begin with. But he keeps him. See, the thing is, and that's the thing is, 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 you know, if you're going to be a YouTuber, you're going to be, you know, Instagram, post stuff, and just don't get upset. I mean, when, when you know, you want to talk about, you know, what people, what uh, how the world should collect their books and their comics, then you're going to get people that are going to comment back. And they're not going to be always so nice. And you have to accept that if you're if you're going to put your comments out there, that you have to take both, you know, comments that are are you know good for you and that are bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with comic book shops. When we post a book that we're selling and say, "Hey, this is hot, Tom Key collector," um, you know, Kang, you know, whatever, whatever. We understand that we're promoting a book because the store has to make money. That's right. If you say, "Well, the store shouldn't do that," well, the store can't live on. Just new books. Yeah, they have to turn a profit. Right. Your book costs four dollars. The store gets it for maybe, you know, two something. They're making a dollar fifty a have book. Have to pay the employees. It's, it's pretty much everywhere. Right. Well, yeah. But I'm saying that they're not making a ton of money off those books. And then the back issue books, you know, you're buying collections and then you're selling the books and you're making a you're making a little profit here and there. But the one in twenty fives, the one in tens, it's variants. The, the variants, the spec books that tell you this this character might be coming. Those are the books that the comic shop can make a little extra money on to basically buy collections so that you can get books. So when you when you downplay, when you're talking trash about how comic book shops do these or a dealer, the pump and dump. Pump they, and dump. The, the book hits a big high. You know, Spawn 1 hits high because McFarlane's doing a signing. So then the comic book shop takes all their Spawn's 1s and puts them out and sells them. And you're like, it's a pump and dump. It probably is. They're trying to get rid of their inventory. Right. But at the same time... That allows them to bring in money into the store so they can either do some updates, they can buy some new collections, and also... Maintenance. You don't have mm-hmm. to buy it. You can see a book that you want go up too high, and you can just sit. You have the ability to do both. Patience. Buy the book at a high price and pay the price when it goes down, or sit and wait. But you, but but don't trash other people for doing what you what you think is wrong. Just don't do it. I'm also fascinated by free comic book day FOMO. <laughs> I noticed that. You know, and I know certain stores now, the last few years, have been limiting how much you can take. Before, you'd be able to grab like 
you know, one of every 50 books, but now it's like, okay, only five. Well, yeah, I mean, it's what a lot of crazy. people don't know is that the shop still had to pay for the books. That's right, that's they right. They get it at a discounted rate, but, but they're still, still having to pay for the books. That's right. So if you're walking in and you're taking five copies, because this is what, this will happen, mm -hmm. you take five copies of every book when mm -hmm. nobody's looking and you walk that's out not, the that's door not right. or you that's grab right. a whole stack because you think it's going to be hot. That's not right. That's not cool. That's not cool. Because the whole idea of Free Comic Book Day is to bring in new readers, to bring mm -hmm. in younger crowds. Especially the kids. To, yeah, to, to form and educate the you know the public these general children public. into uh you know collectors and, right. and and readers That's and right. interest them in these characters and then they'll go maybe see the movies and stuff and and circling back around when you were talking about uh you know with with uh, the the market and everything this type of of thing happens everywhere like if you think about it the number one worse than comic books weight loss mm. weight loss is the biggest I, I don't I don't want to say fear of missing out but it's the biggest trend that right. people follow. There's always a new diet. The Atkins always diet. Always a new diet. Or whatever yes. the diet is. The yes. sober diet. And, whatever it is. And I can never point at somebody and say, you're stupid for doing that. No. And unless I know the science behind it. Right. You know? Uh, but I will say, if you go in and, and there's people in the store and they're buying books – that they don't want and they're buying them in bulk just so they can flip them. Mm -hmm. And you wanted one because you're a hardcore collector, because it's something you wanted, because you're a reader and stuff. That sucks. It's, that's douchebaggery, yeah. They, right. they grab that, all that's, 10 that's copies, it's, it's, 10 remaining know, copies of whatever. I, I feel and I strongly feel this way. If you do want to flip, if you're somebody that's a prospector, so to speak, buy, buy three. If, if you're not buying for yourself, yeah, make it make them a maximum that you buy. Make it your own, your own set of justice, of laws within you eternal, internally. Do like, like you said, three books, three copies of each of these books that's it. that you have, and that's it that you get. And then don't get any more than that. Don't be too greedy. Make right. enough to make a profit and to, to use that to formulate and speculate on the next book coming, the hot next book for yourself. An example and of that was the cool. acetate uh, controversy around Ultimate Fallout 4 oh, last year, God, where yes. people just wiped Thank out everything. You for bringing that and up. people, I, I, I heard the story from you and some other yeah, colleagues of ours. The whatnot crew. And how people were waiting online for hours and hours and hours. And, and you get a copy the of that. And got then these a ahead of them. Yeah, a hole influencers has come around and has grabbed everything and then starts jacking it up. But the funniest part is that mm -hmm. everyone that was upset was like, oh, he's fucking influencer doing this and doing that. And, and it's 100% true. Yes. But a lot of guys in that situation would be like, if they came tomorrow and said, hey, Donald, you're you're one of our buds. Mm -hmm. Show up to our booth, just give us a wave, and we'll I'm gonna you bring up. you out ten books. You're not gonna say no, of course. So I understand right. it's it's a shit, it's a dumb, it's a it's a douche move to do. But every one of us has an in on something. Yeah. Every one of us has a way to get a book at a better deal. You know, we get to see books beforehand. Of course, that could be a total hypocrite. Obviously, right. if I knew someone, of course, I'd be happy to get, to get a deal. But. I, I think this is the extreme of that. Like you wipe out like all 75 the inventory. Copies yeah, you wipe out the majority of inventory. Person. And that's not fair. Go I, fuck yourself. If I get yeah, exactly if I get 75 copies of this whatever hot book, which is silly, but whatever, this hot book, and I'm like, ha, -ha and I'm throwing it on eBay, yeah, a thousand dollars each, then I'm, I'm evil. That's it's a form of evil. It's not right. fair. But here's the thing. Now it's become a piece of history. Yes. So guess what Donald wants? Yes. Donald now wants to get a copy of that book right. because he wants to have that story. Sure, you sure you want to burn I, it? I guarantee you, at some point, that book will become easily accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Now, the Eminem book, right? Mm -hmm. Eminem and Spider-Man. Everyone talked about it being, you know, a high, you know, a FOMO book. But if, if you if you're an Eminem fan and you're a Spider-Man fan, it's a perfect book for you. Yeah. So you get it. And yes, it was limited and, and people bought them. And at one point, the nine eights were going for like $3,000. Now it's kind of cold down. They're like eight hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and they're not. I'm not saying they're more affordable, but they're not as expensive. Right. But it's one of those things is that not everyone can have a Jordan rookie card. Not everyone can have you know uh, you know Avengers one or uh, or uh, X Men number one. It take if you bought it back in the day when it was easy accessible. Then okay, but at this point in your lifetime, it takes a little work. You you invest. You buy books. You sell books. You get to a point where you can buy this book. All I'm saying is, yes, if you're coming to a store and you're going to buy every copy there so you can flip them, it's kind of a shit move to do. But then the store owner needs to understand, you know, on Wednesday, I'm going to limit one book per person. Mm -hmm. And on right. Thursday and Friday, then I don't care what you buy because right. I've given everyone a chance. Right. Get a pool list. If you get a pool list, you're guaranteed to have that book. That's yeah. right. Right? Yeah. 
And, but here's one thing too that they'll they'll do though that I've noticed they'll go to the extreme opposite where they'll go okay so in order to limit this I'm going to charge twenty five dollars for a book that just came out yeah I was about to that's bring that up that's not cool to yeah, me yeah I bring that up I like, was about to bring and, that up and I will give credit to the shop to to We Can Be Heroes when I was down in San Diego I was at a few shops and I wanted to get at the time I think it was Electra becomes Daredevil and I thought how cool is that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm a Daredevil fan. I've seen all Netflix stuff. I've I've read Daredevil throughout the years. Except for that one episode upset you, yes. Right, except for the uh, the Irish episode. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I was like, okay, you know, this is cool. This is like a big thing. So I was like, I'll, I kind of want to get it and see if it's any good, if the storyline's going to be good or anything. So, but I wanted to get it for cost, you know, I, I, and I only wanted one copy. So I wasn't being like greedy or anything. So it, what, what? one of the shops down in San Diego that I stopped at, they wanted uh, thirty dollars, mm-hmm. and it was only for the f- issue. It was like a four hour book, right? Right. So, I called up uh, We Could Be Heroes, mm-hmm. and I said, "Hey, I said, is there any chance I could get Daredevil twenty five? And I think it was the day it was coming out. I said, "Do you think you can pull me one?" And I think I talked to Julio, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll pull one for you." Four bucks. There you go. That's it. Now that book is a four dollar book again. You, you know see? what I'm saying? There you was see? nothing crazy about it. And it was a good story. And you made That's the, the right thing. you made the right decision to say, screw you. I'm yeah. not I'm not paying thirty dollars. I for told this. the guy that told me thirty bucks, I said, You're out of your mind. Yep. But let's just say you paid here's the devil I was kidding. Let's say you right. paid thirty dollars for right. that book. And everyone's like, Ah, you had FOMO and better. Bro, even if he had FOMO and even if he paid the thirty dollars, it's, it's a, a lesson. book he it's wanted to have. That's a lesson right? Le- lesson or not, it's a book you wanted. I myself say that you have to you have to understand that in every collector there's a there's a you have a flipper you have a collector you know they're all built in the same person every person flips books because they're gonna make money every person tries to get the you know the best copies ever because mm-hmm. if you didn't if you if people who say don't have FOMO and you don't give a shit about the book that you're a reader then you never walk up and look at a book you walk up and you pick up the book that's on the table because you don't care if it's got ticks or not. Because it doesn't matter to you. Not trying to flip a book. Mm-hmm. But I've seen guys sit there and go and be the first one there and go through every book to pull out the most perfect yep, yep. copy of I'm that book. I'm glad you bring that up. It's so disturbing. It, no, I, I mean, I don't I don't care. If you want, I don't mind waiting behind you if you want to look at the other book. <laughs> uh, yeah, but come on. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I get what you're both saying. You're saying, you know, just quickly look and check the corners and stuff. Kevin, and I've seen this, is talking like they'll get out their goddamn magnifying glass oh, yeah. and inspect it. Oh, yeah. I had a guy one time, he's like, hey, bro, bro. He's like, stop handling all the books. He was like, you're getting your fingerprints all over mm-hmm. them. No other customer wants them after you've dirtied them mm-hmm. with your fingers mm-hmm. and your oily skin. He said, just pick a book out and be happy and, and be done. And and he was right to a point. I mean, they're they're both right to a point. Uh, yeah, you know, if if they just want to look and see for sharp corners and stuff, or, or you know, like uh, you know, uh, what uh, spine ticks or something like that, that's fine. But if you're going to deeply inspect it to where looking for a, a holds up the line, and B, you're getting your shitty grubby hands all over everything. every copy, you be pissing everyone off. right off. Yeah, piss everyone off. Right off. But what I'm saying, but that's, but what I'm saying is that every person has a little something about them, right? Oh, you're not kidding. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. So I I tell people all the time, if in fact you're the guy who needs to get the perfect book, then you may need to go to more than one shop. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. If you're the guy who's just a reader, then just grab the books on there. If you're a guy who's chasing what they say is FOMO, then chase the fucking FOMO. Who gives a fuck? What I'm saying is, is that as a collector, as a seller, as a person who works, you know, at a shop, I understand all aspects of the of the of the hobby. The collector, the guy who you know flips. The person that's what I call a curator who just wants to continue his run. He's got, you know, the first eight hundred issues of that series and, and, does, and wants to have it every every one. The guy comes in here. He's like eighty years old, buying Spider Man just because it wants to continue the run. Right. But just let him be. Whatever they want. Whatever they want to do, let him be. Let him be formal guys. Let him be formal guys. Yeah. I mean, we have some people that that come into the shop, and uh, they'll get uh, three or four copies of each book. And um, I'm I'm like, okay, you know, well, and I tell them, I say, hey, you know, they'll, they'll be like, oh, can you pull me this many copies of each? And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll pull you those copies, but then I'm going to go through all of our pull lists. And I said, if customers need it, as I go through that pull list, I'm going to pull from your right. copies to be fair, to fulfill their order. And to I said, fair. anything that's extra that's left over, I said, you are welcome to. 
And then I said, well, why are you getting these? And he said, oh, I'm getting them for, you know, for my kids, you okay. know, for, for their future okay. as an investment, just in case, you know. So uh, they have books and then they can decide what they want. And then they can see they can see what their dad was into and maybe have a like a time capsule of what of what he was into and what he liked and stuff. And, and if, I thought that was kind of cool. And if they're not into it, they can you, sell it or, and on, on his behalf. I just I just tell them you can pull you can if you want four book four of each cover, I mean of each book, I'll pull you for each book. But just so you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna order an extra four copies of that book specifically for you and you're gonna pay for those four copies. Right. So if you want four copies of Spider Man and Batman, I'm gonna order four extra besides our normal order. Mm-hmm. So you always have your four. But understand, you're going to have to pay those for those four regardless. If you come back and look, oh, I'm not going to collect this anymore. No problem. Pay for the four for this week, and I'll cancel the rest going forward. But if you're asking for four, you're going to pay for four no matter what. Yeah, because it's coming out of our... And that's the right. worst part. The only thing I have a problem with people when they come to the shop and they have a pool list of 20, 30 books, and then they'll basically look through and go, here are these six. I don't want them anymore. Can you put these back? And then you end up having to... Having to kind of, I mean, you can probably resell them, but I'm just saying, if you're going to have a pool list, understand that we're ordering those books based on the, your pool. So if our pool list is 50 people getting Spider-Man, we order 50 copies. Mm-hmm. So if you decide you go three weeks or four weeks without picking pick, pick your books and you go, oh, I don't want these Spider-Mans anymore, well, we order specifically for you, right? And then the week's already passed, so everyone's already either gotten their copy somewhere else or isn't going to buy it. So that book's just going to go into the back issue bin. And we're going to lose And you're going to hope and pray that somebody comes in in the next couple it. weeks and wants it. Yeah. 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 I mean, and that's thousands of books that, that happens that way. But I, I think we have a clear understanding. And I think I think we've been pretty fair overall with, with the pros and cons of, of, of people deciding how they want to collect and what they want to collect. And uh, the justifications for each individual collector and what they feel. It's all opinion-based. And it's all... At the end of the day, you you want to support the hobby because you want the hobby to continue. There was a a thought that had crossed DC Comics minds uh, when AT and T owned it mm. that they were going to go completely digital and they oh, were going to stop no. printing books. Oh, that's evil! And that's when us collectors lost our collective shit because we were not happy with the idea mm-hmm. of. We're not, we're not the NFT crowd. No. You know, we are the in my hand, tangible, crowd. tangible, want to Tactile read, thumb through it, crowd. hold it in our hands crowd. Smell yes. that beautiful Hell pages. Yes. yes, definitely. So I feel like that way uh, it's, it's, it showed how we collect, what we collect, what we like, how we like it. And, and I feel like there is no wrong way. Um, in, in people again, yeah, they should collect what they enjoy. They should collect what they love. And, and whether that's because they want to keep it because they want to sell it, make a profit because they want to invest in their children's future. However you want to do it. I feel like it's a solid way to be. And, and I can't judge you according because I've done every single one of those things except for invest for my children. Cause I don't have any, I mean, none that I know of, mm-hmm. but you know, I feel like I've done all of those primarily, and, and I feel like I can't I can't be too judgy on that. And I support the comic book community and everybody involved. So I'm I try to be as positive as possible for everyone. You know, whether it's it's a YouTuber, an Instagrammer, a uh, person on the street, a comic shop owner, uh, a friend, a, a, you know, a colleague, whatever it may be. I feel like we should all collectively understand that other people are different and they do things differently. So we should just. Stay in our lane. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave you. I'll leave you. I'll leave you with my last comment. I'm not gonna say say no to FOMO. What I'm gonna say is <laughs> FOMO responsibly. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good I, one. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yep. Anything you want to add, Kevin? Before we close this out, you know, I'm neutral. You know, live your life. If you want to FOMO yourself to death, so be it. You would. Uh, but but as a brother uh, Raphael said, FOMO responsibly. Yes. All right. Well. That'll do it for today, and uh, hopefully uh, if we don't see you out and about anytime soon, perhaps we'll see you at the anxious, exciting, but always deliberate comic book shop. This has been The Real Short Box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening. 